Hi folks, this is question 11. We just have to substitute in the minus 2 here. We get 12. And it's minus 3 times minus 2 squared. And just be careful, you have to have brackets around the minus 2 there because you're squaring it, or you might be able to understand yourself, anything square will always make a positive number. If you put all that into the calculator, it'll do it for you perfectly. If you put in, for example, something like this, if you put in 12 minus three multiplied by minus two squared like that, it'll actually give you the wrong answer because what it's doing is it's, it's squaring the two and then it's minusing it after. But it's all of that minus two that is being squared so that will turn it into a positive four so that what i have here now needs to go into the calculator or work it out in your head if you understand obviously uh, so that's going to be zero again because it's 12 minus three times four so that's zero the next bit it's factorizing we need to rearrange around here there's nothing in common there between the m and the minus 3 it might work anyway i'm going to rearrange it first and then i might try it after if it'll work normally so pm uh, minus m plus 3p minus 3 we're taking the first two and factorizing them so taking out what's common there's an m there that's common and then what times m gives you pm it'll just be p and what times m gives you m? It's just 1. So p minus 1. Then we take the second 2. So plus, and we take out what's common. So there's a 3. Then uh, what times 3 gives us 3p? It's just p. And what times 3 gives us 3? It's 1. So p minus 1. And then we can take the two bits that are outside the m and the plus 3. And the p minus 1. Now what I did there was I, I put the PM and the minus M together just so I had an M to take out and I put the 3 P and the 3 together as well. So that's probably easier to do or to get your head around. If I just try to do it normally, so PM plus 3 P minus M minus 3. If I just do it without rearranging first of all, uh, there I can take a P out, so M plus 3. And then what you'll have to do, you need to get the same thing into the bracket. So you have to take a minus one out there. If you take a minus one out, you'll have M plus three in there as well. And you can take minus one out of a minus M and out of minus three. So you get the same answer, P minus one, M plus three. It doesn't matter that they're rearranged. So I've done it two different ways there really. Right, here we have to understand what the inequality signs mean and also the NZR. So N, that's all positive numbers. That's just, and they have to be whole numbers. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. Z is positive and negative whole numbers. And then R is all decimals and fractions and everything, every number, including positive whole numbers and negative whole numbers. Right, so the first one, X is less than 2 and it's an element of z so that means it could be a negative whole number so it's less than two if it's less than two it can't be two so it has to be one uh, zero it can be minus one it can be minus two it can be minus three or it can be minus four and so on next one x is less than or equal to three and it's an element of the natural numbers that means it can't be anything negative so it's less than or equal to three that means it could be 3, it could be 2, and it could be 1. Now it can't be 0. 0 is not considered to be a natural number. The last one, what all of this means is that x is in between minus 2 and 4. Now because that's a less than sign, it can't be minus 2 exactly. Because that's a like less than or equal to sign, it means it can uh, it can be four or anything less than four. So it has to be greater than minus two, and it has to be less than or equal to four. It's also an element of the real numbers. That means it can be a fraction, decimal, or anything like that. So it can be things that are in between the numbers. So it could be 
0 0.5 or 1.5 or uh, minus 2 over 3. So I'm going to put a circle on minus 2 and I'm going to put a circle on 4. So it can be anything in between those. So we shade in the line then. That's the difference with the real numbers. For the real numbers, you have to shade the line in. It's not good enough to put dots because it could be anything in between the whole numbers. We said already that it can't actually be minus 2. It has to be something greater than it. So we leave that circle open. But then it can actually be 4 because it's the less than or equal to sign is there. So we're going to shade in that circle for 4. And we're going to leave the other one open. And that's all. That's how we do that. So there's a good bit going on there. But there'll be marks for getting some of it at least. Right, this is algebraic fractions. It's a sneaky enough algebraic fractions one. You wouldn't be used to seeing them with the um, with the va variable on top in one and then on the bottom in the other. So to get a common denominator, I'm just going to shove the two denominators together. So that's how I always phrase it or whatever. Um, now, the 5x minus 2 is already up there. So I'm going to... Because you're basically dividing 3 into all of the bottom. So 3 into all of the bottom there will go 5x uh, plus 2 times. Oh yeah, this is going to get complicated now. Yeah, which is a nasty enough question really. Um, plus, and then the 2 is already on top there. And now I'm dividing, because the 2 is over 5x plus 2, it's the other thing that goes up is the 3 that goes up. So you're dividing 5x plus 2 into all of the bottom, so the 3 will go up uh, there beside the 2. On top then we have double brackets in there. To, to multiply out those double brackets, there's different ways that you would have done it, uh, depending on your teacher. But uh, it's just multiplying them out. So we're going to multiply everything by everything. So I'm going to do 5x multiplied by 5x first of all. So that's 25x squared. Then I'm going to do 5x multiplied by minus 2. That gives me minus 10x. Then I'm going to do 2 multiplied by 5x. That's plus 10x. And then I'm going to do 2 multiplied by minus 2. And that's minus 4. Then this is all the top line now. I'm going to, it's plus 2 times 3 then. So that's just plus 6. On the bottom we have 3 and we have 5x plus 2 still there. So that's always going to be there. So you have that much at least you're getting a 10 mark. So if you get the bottom right. The top then you'll notice you have a minus 10x and a plus 10x. So minus 10x plus 10x is 0. So they cancel each other out. Then we're left with 25x squared plus 2 on top. And then 3 and 5x plus 2. And that's it then, we can't go any further than that. And that's it for question 11.